this talk. Uh, last time, I completed the XML. Uh, as you remember, in the very the beginning of the last class, I discussed that uh, we need to cover uh, XML means we need to have an idea of uh, what is XSL and what is XSD and XPath also. XPath is not a major component, but if you want to learn the X XSL, uh, XPath, XSL is based on XPath. So <coughs> we got to cover that also. So today we are going to start with uh, XSL. Uh, so basically, uh, XSL actually con uh, consists of XSLT, XPath, and some local different. So uh, XSL stands for extensible splicing language. Uh, to be, uh, basically, we use XSL to convert some XML document uh, basically to HTML format, or you can uh, do it in other ways also. So basically, if I to give you an uh, idea, so this is your XML file. HTML file from this XML. So basically, XML will consist of the data of uh, what you need to display in some format. Here we are talking about displaying in HTML format. So maybe here, uh, as we discussed last time, we have the, uh, the menu, like the food, and several codes. This is the, the file that I am talking about, is the, the file that we discussed in last time, the XML file. So I want to display these things in here as a table. Let's say I have five food, and uh, each food will have the price and description, calories, and all these attributes. So I, I want to display this thing as a table where you have uh, name. Price and description. But with this XML format, I cannot basically it's just uh, contain the data. I want to display that. If like this, the solution is use XSL file, define your XSL, and attach this XSL file to XML. So that once you open this XML file from a browser, it will understand that the data in the XML document should be displayed in this format. That is the, the main usage of XSL. Uh, so XSL is the major thing which consists of XSLT, the transformations. The, this file will be written in XSLT, which is the language. Okay. And XPath is how you, uh, uh, so I have to tell here, food element should be displayed in this format and name which is under food and price, like yeah. So I have to somehow refer to these elements. So there is standard format of referring this element called XPath. We will go to some examples. So that is why XPath is uh, uh, very relevant to SSLT. And then, <coughs> in this language, they have set of uh, elements, predefined elements, uh, so that any browser, so if somebody has to develop a software to interpret these two, the combination of XML and XSL, there should be some agreement saying that these are the terms that, that is going to be used in this language, and this is this is how you gonna uh, uh, display this, like in Java. Basically, XSL is a spreadsheet that's used to put in organized information to the XML. Or am I confused here? It's not a, a spreadsheet. It's uh, okay. Uh, you will understand this thing in, in a few minutes because I'll go to the examples. Okay. So today, whatever I uh, teach here, I'll go. To, I'll explain with examples. <laughs> So, like in Java, you have these keywords, right? Like class, public, private, and all those things. 
So somebody, if somebody want to write a compiler to Java, he, he, he needs to understand what these terms means. Otherwise, if you just use ad hoc terms, nobody can write a software. So likewise, here, this language has a set of uh, terminologies. The, the XSL consists of that vocabulary so that somebody can write the, the piece of software to interpret these things and display it in the format that, uh, that the user wants. So those are the three components of XSL. Okay, so we are going to start with XPath. Uh, basically, XPath is to <coughs> navigate through the XML elements <coughs> where you can say, I need this element, I need this attribute. Likewise, uh, as you, in the previous lecture, we covered XML parsers, where you wrote a Java program to get all this uh, data. Basically, uh, so here we are talking about converting some XML file to another format. So we are not uh, taking the data out of this XML and put it into another program as a input. We just need to display it like this. So this uh, XPath, we can use uh, the language of XPath and get the data out of these uh, elements. Okay. So, and this is a, a W3C recommendation. So here are few examples. Uh, let's say uh, you have a, a file like this. Okay, you have a file on inside not in have body. This is our XML file uh, that we are going to write some export queries and to get some data out of this XML document. Okay. So here you have Bookstore as the root element and it has uh, several book elements. Inside each okay, uh, book has a, a attribute called category and each book element will have like four component or elements, title, author, year and price and title has a attribute uh, for length. <coughs> so I want to get 
all the titles of the books. Okay. Uh, actually, to do this kind of thing, you need to know something called JavaScript, which is a branch type language for uh, browsers. Okay. So, uh, in this lecture, we are not going to cover the JavaScript, but uh, here, uh, uh, for for this different from uh, JavaScript, so we will be covering JavaScript in uh, some in the future lecture. So let's say I want to get all the all the titles. So you can see here. Bookstore, which is the, the root element, and book. Okay, which is the, the child element of book, bookstore, and then each book will have title. So now, I, if I run this thing, it will give you all the, the titles, of, titles of the books. Okay. So let's say I want to get uh, this attribute the language attribute of uh, each book uh, in it. So title has a attribute called language. So I can basically say I have language till title and then I know that title has attribute called lang and I just say add sign and lang. So it will give you all the uh, uh, this X part is much more advanced than this. We can have filters like uh, like like the following. Okay, before that, let's see, see here. Like uh, um, since it has uh, four book elements. Whenever I say this, it will give you all the uh, lang attributes of four elements. If I want to just pick, <coughs> this, I would say, give me the first. Okay. Give me the first type. Likewise, I can. Uh, access the particular positions of this array. And then I can do something like, here you can see in the XML document, uh, each book has a, a element called price, which has some uh, uh, double array and also here. So let's say I want to get all the books which is uh, with, uh, the price of the book is uh, greater than 35. So I can basically write something like this and whenever you say book here Knows that these are the uh, elements that this guy is referring to, 
and how to display these things. <coughs> so as we discuss these things, uh, XSLT is the, the transformation language uh, which has particular uh, set of uh, vocabulary like uh, elements, uh, predefined elements, so you can use this. <coughs> XSLT is just a way to convert XML to other forms of format like Java yes. or... Not Java. Uh -huh. You can convert it to uh, text formats. Ah. Okay. And, X, uh, and XPath is just basically the means to the end. Yes, uh, XSLT is based on XPath. So here you have to uh, you have to have a way to say that these are the elements that I am referring to to interpret in some other format. XPath is the way to, to do that. Okay, so here are a few uh, tags from XSLT. All these are predefined things. Okay. Uh, you may, be, you can, uh, I think uh, almost the, all these things are self-registered. So here, uh, this is a loop. Okay, you know Java has this kind of thing, and this is the sort. If two is uh, almost uh, same to switch statements, and when is almost like the A, Likewise, they have this uh, particular vocabulary so that you can uh, use these things and convert the, the XML. Let's see how to do that. Document, that this is your XML document. 
we are doing it in the other way. Okay. If you look at this XML document, you can see here, I am saying to the XML document that this is your XSL document. Because XML, is that this is the file that is being displayed in the, the browser, not the XSL file. <coughs> So now uh, you, I mean, you guys are familiar with the, this PR and TD tags. So for one row, what I'm saying is, get the value of, okay, get the value of this element. Okay, this is the X part. Breakfast the menu, put and name, and put it in one uh, this cell. And the second cell should consist of the price of the, the okay. So if I now the extended document the display in the browser. each element of breakfast menu and food, I want to get to all the things. Now, since I have already referred to uh, breakfast slash food, here I can just say name and price. I don't need to do this again. Price is greater than, okay, you cannot use uh, 
this yeah greater than sign because it's already uh, it's a symbol of the, the language itself so I'm, what i'm saying is if the price element is greater than 5 please put it into the, the table otherwise just ignore so you can have this kind of uh, sophisticated things in the xsl file so here you can see now you have this thing which is uh, less than 5 and if I press that thing Uh, this 
all systems, then you have to uh, deal with DDD because once you define a schema for a big XML file, it's very difficult to change that we have to go through each and every line and connect it to SSD, and they don't feel it, uh, they don't feel the necessity of running that for some systems. So here we are going to use uh, XSD for uh, define the schema for uh, XML documents. So with XML, XSD documents, XSD files, you can define for each XML document, these are the elements that appear in XML documents, and this is the, the order that things should appear. Okay? These are the child element of uh, this element, and this is the data type, and these are the attributes that can present in the, uh, this element, whether the attribute is required or it is optional, and all these kind of rules. Uh, and uh, the main reason to use XSD files is to, uh, since this uh, since <coughs> the XML has uh, this freedom of defining all these tags as I wish, uh, no, uh, if I am if I am to communicate with somebody else, uh, it's very difficult to have the agreement between uh, uh, two parties. The only way to do that is define the schema that okay, this is the format you should send me the uh, the message. These are the, the elements that should appear. This is the order that they should appear. These are the attributes and all those things you can define. If, let's say, if I send the mm -hmm. document and the other party can validate the XML document with the XSD file. If it fails, that means uh, my XML, key, XML document <coughs> is not tied to that uh, XSD. So that is the main reason to use the HSD. So as I said that we had a XS, we had a something called DTD. So what is the difference between HSD and DTD? So HSD basically based on uh, XML documents, you don't have to learn any other language to uh, do the things. If you are uh, comfortable with XML, it's just a matter of learning few terms from HSD to define your scheme. And DDD actually did not support uh, data types. Uh, so that in DDD, I cannot say this element should contain only string. This element should contain only data, only integer value. Like so with XSD, you can do that. And uh, furthermore, like from XSD, you can define your own data types. Okay. So that is the uh, main advantages of uh, XSD. So these are the uh, few data types from XSD. Here you can see it, it covers almost uh, all required data types. Uh, where you have, where, yeah, basically you will deal with uh, strings, decimal, and integer. They may be taken back. So uh, with this, all these uh, six elements, you you should be able <coughs> to uh, write all, almost all your XML files except, except if you have a, a particular requirement. In that case, you can uh, define your own data types. So I think you guys are familiar with this kind of things. Uh, 
uh, these things are here in the same way also. And element can contain other elements, which, which means uh, that should be a complex type, which is like this. Uh, we have this thing. we are going to use the same file um, which is the, the mini file where I have multiple put elements <coughs> and each put element has a, uh, has a it's all tags. So let's define a uh, schema for this one saying that it should start with breakfast menu and it should have uh, put as child elements of the breakfast and put should have all these four uh, five things and then I can say price can only contain double value okay. and it should have an attribute okay. and then I can say calorie should contain only uh, integer and all these are um, strings so let's try to define these things Yeah, 
So we are starting. Uh, this is the root element of this class. This of this document. The schema. Okay. Uh, what we should do is when we see a uh, element in the XML document. Okay. We should write the schema definition for that, uh, for that element. So our first one is breakfast menu, which is the first element that we uh, can pass in the XML document. You can see breakfast menu contains other elements. Okay? That means it becomes a complex file. Okay? We can <coughs> define the breakfast menu as a complex file, okay? which contains other tags. So, element but it is a complex type and then I am saying that uh, it can contain sequence of element called code okay? and the number of occurrences of code element is unbound. So you can have as many as uh, code elements inside the, the breakfast menu. You can have uh, restrictions on here like it should be 5 only, maximum it should be 5 and you can have the min occurs also. Likewise, they have this uh, vocabulary so that you can have all the all these kind of prescriptions to define your schema. So here, uh, you, what you should understand here is uh, we, we started with uh, breakfast menu, which is a complex type. We are in fact, which is, is that uh, breakfast menu is a complex type, and we define it accordingly. Here, I'm not defining the food. Uh, we, I'm just referring to the something on the uh, the. In the up, uh, here uh, is the, the food element. So let's see how we define the food element. Before that, let's see how food element looks like. So it also has all these uh, other elements. Again, food element becomes a uh, uh, complex type. Okay. So here is my. <coughs> Code element, which is again a complex type. Okay. Here I am saying it consists of sequence of all these things: name, price, description, calories, and the date. All are our uh, elements from the XML document, and all these things should appear in the this sequence. It should uh, cannot appear in other way. order. No. That's this why I am saying it should follow the strict order that. Yeah. Food must have first name, then price, and description. It should not have price and then No, that's why the sequence means that. Okay. So uh, here again, I'm referring to some other elements which is defined in somewhere else in the file. Okay. Because I don't want to have the uh, everything in one. So I will show you the the file which has everything in inside one element, which is uh, kind of a uh, it's not readable. Okay. It's very difficult to understand if you're looking at. Uh, looking into its device at the first time. Uh, so here we again uh, should understand what is the compressed type and it has sequence of all these uh, things. And then uh, we, if we go to our uh, file again, we define this one, okay, breakfast menu, and we already defined the food also. The next one is the name. We don't have to define the full file address. Right? You, you guys understand that because we, we only deal with one schema means you define the general thing. You don't have say each and every Food means one. You can have multiple instances in the XML document, that doesn't matter. So 
next one is the name. So here you can see name is a just a simple type. It does not have attribute, it does not have elements inside that. It just has only the text. So go to the, the document again. Here is the, the name, which is a simple type. And I'm saying that inside the name, you can have only strings. And what is our next tag? Is the price, which is again a complex type because it has data plus attribute. Okay, that is the only difference between this one and that one uh, to be to price to become a complex type. How do I define the price? It's like this. Okay, I have the, the element price which is a uh, complex type, okay. And then since it has uh, this uh, attribute, I'm defining like, uh, it has, a, uh, in the, the language itself, it has this uh, simple content. Uh, even though it's a complex type, it is not complex as other things. You just have the text and the attribute, okay. Here I'm saying it should contain decimal, okay. And it has attribute called currency, the value of currency should be a string, okay? and it is a required. It is not option. Each and every price tag should have attribute or currency. It should have a, a, a value of type string. Okay? You can actually have uh, all the possible. Let's say you are restricted to five kind of currencies, like USD, uh, Euro, or all these kind of things. If you have that set of five things defined, you can say here only you can have all. Uh, one of these values. Okay. I uh, actually, yeah, we have some example down here. So you can have restrictions like that. Okay. Now let's get back to the XML file. We are here. Okay. We have defined all these tags. Now, next one is the description, which is again a simple type. Here is the, the description because it's a <coughs> simple type. It's very simple in the HSD document also. <coughs> and calories, it is again a simple type. You just <coughs> type the text and you can have, I think I did. Okay. 
you can use these softwares uh, to validate your experiment of human against uh, existing. So I found one online here.
basically what I did was like the paste the XML document and paste the SSD schema and ask to validate and it said me uh, it's a valid document. Let's change some stuff here. Let's say I make it uh, <coughs> string. And then it will say price element has invalid value according to the date type according to its date type. Likewise, you can validate your Thank you. 